What's going on guys? In this video, we're looking at the big trade of the deadline to happen literally like with five minutes to go. Thomas Hurdle going to the Vegas School Knights with two third round picks. When I first saw the trade tweet, I thought the Sharks were getting the picks, but no, Vegas gets Hurdle and two thirds in exchange for a 2025 first. That's why they had the clause on the Hannafin trade that they could trade their 2025 first. So the Flames now get the 2026 one, as well as David Edstrom, who was actually their first round pick last year, 2023 draft, drafted 32nd overall. Also too, the Sharks retain 17% of Hurdle's contract for the next six years after this season, which is absolutely insane. So I think this is probably the biggest fleece of the deadline. Originally, I thought it was Gensel the Hurricanes, but this one just makes no sense to me. Um, Hurdle here, you can see in game, has the most value behind the two wills there, and both Will Smith and Eklund. 29 years old, 87 overall, making 8.14 million for the next seven years. So like I said, they're retaining for six more years after this one on that contract. I think, you know, he's a solid player in my mind. He's a high end second, low end first line player. And again, the big contract there is kind of why it was gonna be hard to move him. But the main reason I don't understand this trade is for two reasons. One, they're only retaining 17%, which really isn't that much. I feel like you probably could have found somewhere else to trade him for no retention or maybe retain more and get a bigger return. As well, they're trading him to like their arch rival in the Vegas School Knights, divisional rival. And they're probably gonna be like paying him when they're actually starting to get good and actually compete with Vegas. So. I just can't wrap my head around this one at all. And honestly too, Vegas is doing so much like cap circumvention. I know it's all like legal technically. I actually had to turn salary cap off for this video because I just couldn't figure out a way to get Hurdle on the team. Otherwise, after bringing in of course, Hannafin and Mantha as well. So Vegas here gives up the 2025 first round pick. They're actually holding on to their 2024 first, maybe in case somehow they do miss the playoffs this year or maybe they just see a bunch of prospects they like going in like that mid to late first round of this year. And then like I said, they also add David Edstrom who they drafted last year 32nd overall supposed to be you know a pretty decent player over in sweden uh, projects to be a third line center according to craig button in game here 18 years old 68 overall medium top six potential and i almost forgot guys but the sharks are also giving up their third round pick in 2025 as well as 2027 i just i don't understand it so looking at it here the sharks you know have more value on their side i just realized i was gonna have them retain salary but i can't because salary cap is turned off doesn't matter though i don't think the sharks say yes to this even without the salary retention they do want the first and edstrom but uh medium difficulty here should be a no and yeah trade is rejected like i was saying i think the sharks got absolutely fleeced on this one i just don't understand it. Now to the trade, guys. Here's what the Vegas School Knights are going to look like when they're healthy. Game one, maybe game two of the playoffs. So I feel like they keep that first line intact. Barber Chef, Eichel, March so. Worked so well for them last year on their Stanley Cup run. Second line now, you're probably looking at Mark Stone, Thomas Hurdle, Chandler Stevenson. Like, that's a nasty top six. Even the third line, Mantha, Carlson, Nicholas Waugh. The fourth line's intact. You got Colasar, Amadeo, Carrier. Defensively, of course, they're bringing Hannafin. If Martinez can get healthy... Him and Hager on the bottom pair. In terms of scratch players, just for depth, you got Paul Cotter, Thoreau Faya, Zach Whitecloud. You've also got Brett Howden, I've got in the minors right now. Goaltending Aiden Hill and Logan Thompson. They got a good goalie duo there. So this Vegas team's absolutely stacked. Kind of crazy. They're currently in the second wildcard spot in the West, which is why I said there's a chance they could actually miss the playoffs, which is why I think they did not trade that 2024 first. They have a pretty good lead, though, on the Flames, the Blues, the Kraken. So I don't see it happening, but. Obviously, you never know. Next year, guys, I'll give you our first look at Thomas Hurdle as a newest member of the Vegas Golden Knights. I think, like Mark Stone, we probably don't see him play till the playoffs. I did see them, you know, tweet out that, you know, they're hopeful he'll be back before then, but I don't see it happening. So there you go. Hurdle on the Vegas Golden Knights. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Rocket number 48 there. And now, guys, we're trying to trade from the Sharks' perspective. So looking at it here, you can see the Vegas Golden Knights are interested in Thomas Hurdle, which makes sense. I mean, why would you not be? Take a look to the third round pick in 2025. They actually don't want, but that's probably because in game they haven't traded away all those picks that they have at the deadline. It's obviously really nice for them. They get hurdle, plus they get some picks to kind of make up for the ones they moved on from. And then again, all the Sharks get back here. 2025 first, which could be like pick number 29, pick number 30. And then David Edstrom is a decent prospect, but again, you got to remember 32nd pick in the draft basically is a second round pick um, projected to be like a third line center. Hurdle's a first line player for you right now. You're retaining 17% of his contract for the next six years. And I think the biggest reason why that's so strange to me, guys, if you look at Cap Friendly here, you'll see they're also retaining on Burns and Carlson for next season. So that means next year's trade deadline, they can't retain on anybody. So uh, those teams that were like the middleman getting a you know, fourth, fifth round pick to retain one and a half million dollars, 
they're not getting anything. It's actually kind of the opposite. Like they're literally retaining the amount you'd normally get a fourth round pick for for the next six years. So you can almost look at it as them giving Vegas a fourth round pick for the next six years, opposed to them getting one from all these teams as a middleman. Also too, if you look at a guy like Mikel Granlin here, you're making five million bucks for two more seasons. He's been one of the Sharks' better players this season. I feel like normally you would retain half his salary, move him at next year's deadline. Now it's gonna be very tough to do that because he's making five million, you can't retain. Um, best case, I guess you'd have to take back, you know, another team's bad contract, which is probably worse for the Sharks than if, you know, they could just retain on him. So I just, I don't like this trade at all for the Sharks. Um, in game here again, values on the Sharks side, Vegas wants Hurdle, Edstrom's on the block. I feel like they say yes. And yeah, trade's accepted. So EA feels how I feel, which is Vegas definitely won this trade. I think that's how most people feel. And what's kind of crazy too is that the Sharks actually weren't done there. They had a bunch of trades come in after the deadline, but apparently, you know, they were like signed paperwork before the deadline. And I actually forgot too, guys, the Sharks were so busy. They made a couple of their deals. One was with the Red Wings getting Klim Costin for Simic and a seventh. That's a pretty like neutral deal. I don't really have, you know, strong feelings either way. For us, Costin was actually scratched. And then before that, uh, last night, they actually made, I think, probably their best deal of the deadline, trading Anthony Duclair for Jack Thompson and a third round pick. I think Jack Thompson could actually end up being an NHL defenseman for them. Plus they get a third. And if you guys look here, we'll take a look at the defense first. They probably have the worst defense in the NHL, and they have like no good defensive prospects coming up. So that defense is going to be rough for the Sharks for at least, you know, the next few years. Forward-wise, even after Train Hurdle, when healthy, they got some players. They got Couture, they got Granlin, Zetterlin's look good. They got Will Eklund there, Will Smith's coming. They got Bordelow's not bad um, in terms of the bottom six. You know, LeBanc, they got Hoffman there, Sturm. Again, it's just the defense terrible. And then even with the forwards, you really have no like first line guys. Most of these guys, even Couture at this point, more of a second liner. Gold tanning, you got Vanacek and Blackwood. So kind of funny too. Devils goalies reunited there. But yeah, overall, this Sharks team is going to be rebuilding for quite some time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. You guys have somehow missed it. I was hacked a couple days ago for 24 hours. I lost over 500 subscribers. So I really appreciate you know you just liking this video. Subscribe if you unsubscribe or tell someone else to subscribe so I can try and get those numbers back. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you had fun with the trade deadline today. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.